the practice of Advent is akin to the practice of Lent. It is purely an ecclesiastical invention having no scriptural basis whatsoever. Uh, I could better explain about Lent with Yaudet Tele Tare and Queen Quadresima Sundays setting the pace for Lent and then how the Mardi Gras came into being in Carnival and how these pagan traditions came in to be blended with Christian traditions. But the same exists with, with Advent in preparation for Lent. There were pagan preparations for the Roman feast of Saturnalia and these things were pseudo-Christianized. Remember, you had in the fifth century particularly following the Council of Ephesus, this hybrid of pagan influence coming into the church. Mary was pronounced queen of heaven because Ephesus is where Diana of Ephesus was worshiped as the queen of heaven. And this was simply expropriated from her and, and appropriated to Mary. Uh, absolutely pagan and a corruption of who Mary is and what she did, but that's the way it happened. Another aspect of this was the legend of St. Nicholas. In some countries, St. Nicholas is distinct from Santa Claus or Father Christmas, depending on where you live, such as Holland, they're distinct. Other countries, they're synonymous. The last leader of the church in Ephesus during the final pagan persecution in Ephesus was Nicholas or St. Nicholas. He was Greek. Uh, he was known for his love of children and the poor, and he had something to do with being a patron of sailors. But he was persecuted for his faith uh, during the last Roman persecution in Ephesus. He was the leader of the church there, the Episcopal. Now, all this other stuff came from the pagan god of gift giving and was attributed to him. They did that with Mary. They did that with, with, with St. Nicholas. And Advent was the same. They simply took pagan traditions and attempted to Christianize them. Now, that would not be a problem if they Christianized them and depaganized them. But unfortunately, they didn't depaganize them. <laughs> There's no point trying to Christianize something if you didn't depaganize it. Let me explain how this works. You've got the 25th of December the Roman feast of Saturnalia, which becomes Christmas. However, in the Hebrew calendar, the Hebrew month that's the equivalent of December is Kislev, Kislev. What day did Jesus celebrate Hanukkah in John chapter 10? Translated in most English Bibles as the feast of dedication. But that was Hanukkah. He was celebrating Hanukkah. The 25th of Kislev but there's nothing pagan about Hanukkah, nothing. Uh, all of the Hebrew holy days given in Leviticus 23 and 24 were celebrated on the same days in the agricultural cycle as the pagan Canaanite holy days. Only the Canaanites were giving thanks to false gods, to demon idols for the rain, the sun, the harvest. Yahweh, God, wanted his people, Israel, to thank him for the rain, the sun, the harvest. The Hebrew holy days displaced and replaced the pagan ones. The rituals were to be carried out in such a way as they had to be meticulously careful, do all I tell you, to keep it distinct from what the pagans were doing. It's not a problem to replace and displace that which is pagan with that which is Judeo-Christian. God told Israel to do it, and Jesus himself observed that practice. The problem is when the pagan tradition and superstitions are retained, and you wind up with a hybrid of the pagan and the Christian. We don't know the day of the year when Jesus was born. So hence, Advent is nonsense anyway. We don't know the year, much less the day. There are those who've made educated guesses. The Evangelical Fellowship of Christian Mathematicians have, 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 have come up with a day that they say was Israeli Independence Day, some of them. These are Christian mathematicians. The Fellowship of Christian Astronomers have looked at it. 
I'd be interested to talk to the Jewish believer who's a famous astronomer, Daniel Bach in South Africa, and ask him what he thinks of an asteroid appearing or any astronomical records. I'd be interested to speak to him sometime about that point, but I haven't. Uh, there are historians, mathematicians, astronomers who are believers who've looked at it, as well as many theologians, but there's no consensus. We don't even know. Hence, Advent itself is a nonsense. Advent itself is an absolute nonsense. We don't know. I personally love the nativity. I love the narrative of the birth of Jesus. I believe, I know, it is a prophetic foretype of his second coming. His first coming gives us a picture of his second in many, many respects. We'll be studying these things in our Devor again, and it's also on our existing teaching tapes, Christmas, Hanukkah, and the Return of Christ. But Advent, nobody knows. Uh, it, it's, it's Roman Catholicism. You know, it's a hybrid of paganism and Christianity. I personally wouldn't bother with it. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's simply the, the religious parallel to this holiday season in America between Thanksgiving and Christmas. In other words, the shopping season, the shopping season. Or in Holland, between um, the feast day of St. Nicholas, which I think is the 14th of December, and Christmas. Uh, in the Middle East, Christmas is celebrated on the 6th or 7th of December, depending on what church you go to, which in the West they call Little Christmas and associate that with the Magi. Look, you know, nobody knows. Nobody knows. And who cares? If God wanted us to know, if it was important, he would have put it in his word. He would have put it in his word, but he didn't. Now, we do know quite a bit about the crucifixion and resurrection because of Passover. But if God wanted us to know when the nativity was, he would have told us, and he didn't. We have to concentrate on what is in Scripture, not on what is not. Having said that, I have no problem with a Christ-centered observation of the nativity. I just obviously don't like all the mammon worship that goes with it. And some of the pagan traditions I find disturbing. In any event, thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings to your friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, 
how to pencil, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.